Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you're doing well today. And uh, I finally am starting a series as of today. There's only two books in this series. I wish there had been a third. People are still asking for a third to this series. And that particular first book is book one of Goosebumps Triple Header. Or is it called Triple Header Goosebumps, according to the organization of the title here? Of course, Mr. R.L. Stein wrote these. I don't know what's wrong with my cover. Do all of the triple header, header covers look like this? Did the paint just come off? Did the sun do something to it? Why do they look like this? Every one I've ever seen on eBay looks like this. But then I see some videos from some of my friends that I don't know if they have like UK copies or what here on YouTube in the community that don't look like this. I could be wrong though. It's been a while since I've seen somebody talk about one of these. But anyway, if you don't know what Triple Header is, again, there's two books. They are essentially stories told to you by this uh, monster here on this cover, which this is a better picture of them on the back. The middle one is named Slim. The one on the left is Lefty, and the one on the right is Righty. And they are a three-headed monster of some sort. And uh, they open up the book with an introduction. And then there are three short stories in here. This is an anthology book, and part two, or book two, is like that as well. Uh, three individual standalone short stories, which are longer than the Tales to Give You Goosebump stories, which those books were like 130 pages or so, and they had like 10 page to 15 page long stories, and a lot of those were really weak. Um, this one is a pretty strong anthology. I was kind of surprised. I don't love it, but I like it a lot. It's got a lot of cool stuff in here, a lot of body horror, too. Some really cool stories. It is a spoiler for your review, as you guys know. I won't tell you too much, but... Uh, I have the stories, titles at least, I'm going to bring those up as I go through the review, but uh, I'm going to talk about each of them individually, but kind of right now let's talk about the introduction with this creature, Lefty, Righty, and Slim. They're kind of funny, I like their jokes, um, they, they have like this, uh, again, this three-headed pun thing going on, they eat animals and stuff, they're kind of fun, I like them, they're cool. I'm surprised they weren't a bigger Goosebumps mascot, like Slappy or Curly or Cuddles or the Mummy. It's kind of surprising they weren't, um, and I'm not really sure when Triple Header came out. Is this before or during Series 2000? The cover style with the green and the black reminds me of Series 2000 quite a bit. The back of the book had like an advertisement that's like a sneak peek for Book 2, but it has a picture of uh, the, the cat from Cry the Cat that I can't remember his name. So I don't know. I don't know when, that, uh, when this book came out. Was it after OG, before series, or was it during series 2000? I don't know. I'm a little confused by that. Please clear that up down in the comment section down below. I would appreciate you guys. Anyway, three short stories. The first one is called, if I can find... Oh, here we are. There's a table of contents. I always forget that exists. I could have used that while I was making my ranking list, which I'll get to in a moment to talk to, talk to you about. Uh, the first story in here is called Ghost Granny. This is my personal favorite out of the entire book. Ghost Granny essentially is about a family who have an old lady who comes to live with them. I can't remember if they said it was the actual grandmother or not, but she's just an old lady who's just a mean-spirited lady, dude. I can't stand this chick. She's awful. She treats them like dirt, always criticizes everybody in the house, including the kids. I think it's a brother and sister, or a sister and sister, something like that, and the parents. And uh, she dies one night, like two days before the main character's birthday. And uh, then the day before the birthday, they have the funeral, which is bizarre. How do you schedule a funeral, a funeral for like the next day? I think it was some kind of time frame like that. I'm pretty sure it was like two days before the birthday. But anyway, they went to the funeral. And then the night of the funeral, the night before the birthday happens for this main character, the old lady is in the kitchen. Everybody kind of hears a noise downstairs. They go down there and she's just chilling there in the kitchen. Dead lady. And she kind of looks a little decomposed, not super, but she claims she met some people in the cemetery and stuff, and she kind of floats around. She doesn't have to walk. And she's complaining about, like, being cold and, like, how she doesn't get warm, but it's not really a big deal. And she tells him, hey, you know, I'm just going to come, I'm going to come back in here, I'm going to move back in your house, I'm going to live in the attic. Don't worry about it. And uh, then she finds out she can't sleep, because ghosts don't sleep. And she decides to start messing with some of them. And she gets more and more offended over time. And becomes more of a, a, a poltergeist type of character, which is, you know, like a, like a dangerous, demonic type spirit. You know, you start tearing up the house and stuff, that kind of thing. That's kind of what she turns into. And the day of the birthday party is pretty fun to watch, too, with what she does there. I personally, maybe the way I described the story wasn't as scary sounding, but I started reading this book last night when I got home from work. I'm going to be honest with you. The ghost granny story, the beginning of it, the setup to it with her randomly dying, all of that... It reminds me a lot in execution 
of Alvin Schwartz's Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. It feels sometimes like it's written like that. Stein did a really good job of that. It doesn't feel like Stein a lot of the time, which was bizarre, man. But the telling of that tale is really what makes it. I think it's genuinely scary. I think it's genuinely creepy. Some of the imagery of the old lady and how throughout the story, she's kind of falling apart. Like her eyes are sinking more and more in or they might pop out. That stuff is genuinely frightening. There's a lot of body horror uh, in the first story and in the third story. I think that's really good, and I think it makes it really enjoyable for people like me who have this grim, dark personality and perspective of life that I really love this stuff. So that's a pretty horrific one. I like that story a lot. I'm not going to rate each of the individual stories. However, when I read book two, hopefully I can finish it up tomorrow before work, I'm also planning on making a ranking video, whether that's released tomorrow or whether it's released uh, over the weekend or on Monday. I'm not really sure yet, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I might be able to get it out tomorrow on Friday, but we'll see what happens. Anyway... The second story in here, Ghost Granny being my favorite, the second story is called Spin the Wheel of Horror. This one I was thinking was going to be more of like a horror land type of thing, and it ends up being similar to the horror land TV episode, which kind of devolves into a game show. Uh, it reminds me a lot of that, by the way. In Spin the Wheel of Horror, which a lot of these titles I can't remember to save my life, essentially a family has been selected to be on this show they love called Spin the Wheel of Horror, or the Wheel of Horror, kind of like the Wheel of Fortune, something like that. They go to this place, they end up finding it in an abandoned building, way out in the woods, and they, they're pretty sure it's the right place. They get in there, and essentially the concept of this show that you're on is that they're going to put you through a lot of stuff to try to scare you, to try to freak you out. And if you scream at all, if you scream at any moment at all, uh, you lose, basically. But if you win, you can win a pretty cool prize, but no one's really made it that far. A lot of people get scared very early on. Uh, it's kind of a cool concept, and I was curious what Stein was going to do that do with that. <clears throat> Frankly, it's kind of disappointing. It has its moments. It has some stuff that are kind of eerie. If you don't like snakes, which I don't, if you don't like snakes, this is going to get to you a lot, I think. But uh, that's kind of the big thing here. There are some other things that are interesting, too. I like the host of this Wheel of Horror show. He's kind of cool. Again, he reminds me a lot of your typical host for any kind of game show type of thing, but mainly the one from Welcome to Horrorland, or the was it Welcome to Horrorland? Yeah, from the episode of that, with the game show thing. Which wasn't in the book. It was a weird change, but I get why they did it, because of the pinching thing. Anyway, that's a whole other story. This was a good read. Uh, I enjoyed this story. It's my second favorite in the book itself, but it's not, like, amazing. It's not super great, but it has some moments in it. Just like the third story in here that I think is the weakest, it has moments. Both of them do. But Ghost Granny still comes out at the top, in my personal opinion. The final story in here... Uh, by the way, these stories are about 40, 50 pages apiece. That's kind of nice. The book overall is about 145 pages, which is pretty cool. The final story in here is called Teenage Sponge Boys from Outer Space. Does that not sound like the most 1950s type of story you've ever heard of in your entire life as a title? It absolutely does. Essentially, there's two characters, uh, the main character and then his friend, and that friend is a girl who loves to watch the Weather Channel. She's obsessed with stuff like that, like the reporting on the news and stuff. She watches this thing called, like, At the Eights or something, and, like, every 10 minutes there's an update at, like, you know, uh, 808, 8, 10, 818, 828, 838, so on and so on, all day long, every 10 minutes. Why? 24-hour news cycle, dude. What's up with that? Even for the weather, dude. Who cares? <laughs> Usually if you go out in the morning, or like in the, the midday, like noon, you can tell what the rest of the weather is going to be like. Just stop. Anyway, she's obsessed with the news. And while they're trying to get to school, they're running pretty late. And uh, they hear a loud bang out in the woods. They decide to go out there to explore. And she says, hey, I didn't think it was going to be foggy. And it's not fog, it's smoke. They're not really sure what's going on with that. They manage to go ahead and get back to the, the path to get to school, because they're running really late now. And when they get there, they happen to find out there's two other kids that are brand new that day uh, who are also late. And their names are Dirk and Deke. Like Durka Durka type stuff. Dirk and Deke. And uh, <laughs> I accidentally spoiled the story for myself because I didn't know what the third story concept was going to be. And when I read the back of the book just briefly while I was reading the book, after I read the second story, I was curious what the concept for, for the story, the third one, was going to be. And uh, they're out of order. That's the second one listed, instead of, you know, in order in the actual book. And uh, it mentioned that they're uh, not what I thought they were going to be. I didn't expect that kind of story in this book. I really don't want to spoil it for you. 
From the things I've told you so far, you can probably guess what's up with Dirk and Deke. Maybe. But I don't want to go too far into that. There's something wrong with Dirk and Deke, as the title says, with the outer space thing, and the sponge people thing. Uh, they're basically aliens. <laughs> they're aliens. And uh, let me tell you this. This is my weakest of the three. I, I think it's really not all that great, you know? But I will say this. This feels like one of those one-off filler adaptations from the Goosebumps TV show from the 90s. And it feels like to me, personally, to me, it wouldn't have been as bad if it was something like that. Because it's kind of a, a neat concept, but mainly because of the body horror in it. The body horror in this particular story is not as good as the first story, Granny Ghost or Ghost Granny, whatever it's called. Uh, there is a particular scene involving the Sponge Boys, Dirk and Deke's heads. And I will never unsee that, <laughs> as long as I live. I didn't see anything, I guess. But in my brain, the mental image that I have, I'll never unsee that. Some of the stuff in this, with the body horror in this particular story, it's great. I love it. Uh, really good stuff. But let me tell you this. Uh, this is a weak story, overall. Kind of a weak way to end the book. Like I said, as you read this book, they get kind of... I don't want to say worse, because they're not horrible stories. It's just they get weaker and weaker, and that kind of lets the book a little bit down by the end of the book. But overall, like I said, for my ranking for this particular book, it's Ghost Granny, then uh, the, the one about the, the, the horror game show thing. I can't remember the title. I don't want to look in the book again. <laughs> I'm too lazy. And then the Outer Space Sponge Boys. Um, that stuff is my ranking, essentially. Now, as I said, I enjoyed the book a lot. I think it has some really good stuff in here for a 150-page long book. It flies by. Bigger font than a lot of Goosebumps book, too, so it, it, it really zooms by, frankly. Kind of quick, you know? I think I read like 20 pages, 25 pages last night, and I read the rest of it today. Really good read. Um, I, I had a good time reading it. It was above average, for sure, in my personal taste. I don't know about everybody's. I don't know if I'd recommend it to everyone out there. But if you like kind of the darker Goosebumps books, this has some humor in places, mainly in the third story kind of in the second story, but the first one is straight up grim about the ghost granny thing. I, I really like that a lot. Um, obviously, it's my favorite. Now, as I said, I will be doing a ranking video. I'm going to take all the short stories from these two books, since there's only two, six stories in total, and I'm going to rank those out from worst to best, and I uh, hope you guys will watch that video too. I plan on putting that up, like I said, hopefully Friday if I can. That should be a relatively short video, but we'll see what happens. When it comes to triple header goosebumps, or Goosebumps Triple Header. The side of the spine says Goosebumps Triple Header. That's what I'm going to list it as on my channel for the video. Anyway, when it comes to book one of <laughs> Goosebumps Triple Header, it's a good read. It's above average. Like I said, I don't love the book, but I love a lot in it, frankly. And I think the first story is fantastic. One of the best short stories Stein ever wrote. One of the best Goosebumps stories ever written, in my opinion. When it comes to the scary aspects of the ghost haunting house thing, the cemetery stuff, the, the ghostly nature of that creepy old grandmother, I liked all of that quite a bit. If I had to rate the book, though, I'd give it a 3 out of 5 stars. It has some really good stuff in here that I think makes it really stand out from a lot of Goosebumps stuff. You don't really have many Goosebumps anthologies. Aside from the show, aside from uh, Tales to Give You Goosebumps, these triple header books, in my opinion, already are better than a lot of those Tales to Give You Goosebumps books. Uh, but overall, I hope book 2 is better than this. I hope it's a little bit scarier or a little bit... Uh, more, you know, horror-focused, more than, like, sci-fi-type stuff. I'm not big into Goosebumps sci-fi. It can be good. It can be entertaining, kind of like here, but it's typically weaker. I don't think Stein really can pull that off. I think he pulls off basic horror adventure stories much better, in my opinion. But anyway, have you read Triple Header Book 1? Do you guys love it? Do you hate it? I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down in the comment section down below about this first book. And again, I plan on reviewing and reading reading and reviewing book two tomorrow so we'll see what happens with that and the ranking video i'm so glad tomorrow's friday dude it's been a rough week aside from valentine's day which was nice uh with my beautiful wife and i anyway three out of five stars for me kind of close to a four but mainly a three i liked it it's a good one i do recommend it if you haven't read it before but again i don't know if i'd recommend it to everybody it's kind of sometimes it feels more childish than other times and i don't know if that's deliberate to kind of bring in everybody make everybody give it a chance but the scarier stuff like Ghost Granny really brings this to life, I think. And tomorrow I will review book two, like I said, hopefully, God willing. Then anyway, have you guys read book one? What do you think about Triple Header? Do you like the idea? Do you wish we had a book three or a whole series, like five or six books? I kind of wish we had like six of these things, because that could have been pretty cool. I don't really understand why we didn't get more. Maybe Scholastic just chose not to order more or what. I don't know. 
Uh, it's not much longer than your typical Goosebumps book, maybe 20, 30 pages longer. Um, oh well. Anyway, what do you guys think? Thank you for watching, guys. God bless you all. Three out of five stars for Triple Header Book One. And uh, that ranking video will be out tomorrow, hopefully. God willing, once again. Hopefully, hopefully you guys will check that out. I'm going to go ahead and start book two real quick in a little bit. Maybe read the first story before I go to work. But uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. God bless you all. Goodbye.